Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I want to do a deeper dive into last night's Indiana Fever loss to the Las Vegas Aces. Nick and I did a live podcast last night for Come On Now, the podcast, and where we did talk about that loss and the way everyone played and how Christy Sides coached. But before we jump in, thank you all to our members and subscribers. Please do continue to follow, share, and subscribe to our channel. Look, everything we say you might not like, but I have to keep it real when I speak about topics. <clears throat> so <clears throat> let's start off with this. Indiana was rolling this year, th th since the All-Star break, the, the Olympic break. The only two losses came against Minnesota. Both of those games were winnable games where they were down by one with five minutes to go and by three with about five minutes to go. So both of those games were winnable games. And decision-making <clears throat> by Christie sides pretty much, in my opinion, cost them those games. Last night was another example of atrocious coaching and uh, bad decision-making overall. Outside of Kelsey Mitchell, no one played well. No one. That includes Caitlin Clark. That includes Aaliyah Boston. That includes uh, Melissa Smith. Lexi Hall did all right. Kelsey Mitchell played okay. You know, she didn't. She finished with 24, but she didn't play well or great. She played okay. She scored some points. Defensively, she wasn't good. She made some mistakes defensively that cost them points. All that said, the coaching job last night was continuation of complete and utter total dog shit. <clears throat> so let's jump in. We saw immediately the difference between a coach who has control and a coach who has no idea what the hell to do. Indiana jumps out 5 0. 36 seconds in, Becky Hammond is calling timeout. She sees her team is not doing what it's supposed to do. She knows that this is going to be a high energy, high intensity game. And she calls a timeout after Lexi Hull hits a three. And she's like, nope, we're not letting go of the rope this early. <clears throat> Let's compare that to Christy Sides, who Let's go of the rope in every game they play. Who will sit by and watch 10-0, 15-0, 17-2, 15-3 runs and stand there with her hands in her pockets and do absolutely nothing? Now, the league got to 7-0, and then Asia Wilson starts hitting her mid-range jump shot. She hits, I think, four of them. And the game is pretty much even for most of the first quarter. And then for some reason, Christy Sides takes Caitlin Clark out of the game with about four minutes, four, 413 in the first. Don't really know why. And at that point, the game goes from being 13-9 to 20 to 18. Uh, Caitlin Clark returned back in. By the time Caitlin Clark came back in the game, the game was tied. Now there were so many mistakes defensively by this team and offensively, naturally they did not play their game. They, they, they got into a snail's pace, which obviously Las Vegas had something to do with, but at the same time, you have to play how you play and how the Indiana fever need to play to win is to, is to, You play how you're supposed to play. And how the Indiana Fever play is push the pace, push the pace, push the pace. Indiana should push the pace on makes and misses. It should not just be on rebounds. They need to push even on makes. Because teams don't get back that fast with the way Caitlin Clark plays. You can beat them down the floor. Run the floor. Don't walk the floor. Now, when you watch a team like Indiana, when they go into that half court type shit, they just completely fall apart. <laughs> like there, there's no question. They just completely fall apart. 
at the same time, what we already know they don't have is they don't have much of a bench. So it's in it's it's critical in nature that you don't have players getting into foul trouble. All that said, Lexi Hall gets into foul trouble. But at some point, you also have to know as a coach, I cannot replace Lexi Hull with Christy Wallace. We did that experiment before. If you recall, Christy Wallace was a starter and Lexi Hull was getting coaches decision DMPs. Christy Wallace is not a good basketball player. And at one point in the second quarter, <clears throat> you have the three worst defensive players on the court at the same time. And that is not inclusive of Caitlin Clark. You had Christy Wallace, Katie Lou Samuelson, and Alyssa Smith on the floor at the same damn time. Let's let's repeat that. Melissa Smith, Katie Lou Samuelson, and Christy Wallace on the floor at the same damn time. So what do you think happened in that time period by the, when, the, when they were on the floor together? The lead goes from 32-27 to 41-32 going into the half. Christy Wallace shows why she should not be on the court. It's not complicated. It is not at all complicated. You need to have on the floor. If, if Lexi Hull has got foul trouble, Erica Wheeler needs to be in the game. I'm not, I may not be a huge fan of Erica Wheeler, but she needs to be in the game. It's just one of those things where Christy Wallace comes in the game and she does absolutely nothing to help the team win. And you don't expect her to. She has a turnover and an air ball shot and another bad pass for which she doesn't get credited for that turnover. She's just not good. And this is a Christy Sides decision. It's a Christy Sides decision. Melissa Smith is horrendous on backside defense, on help defense. She's horrendous on on the ball defense. She's just not a very good basketball player. She is a big ass girl who plays like she's small. Katie Lou Samuelson jacks up a three. Another miss. Like, you know, the reason you don't play Katie Lou. It's because when you get the one thing that you're supposed to do well, you can't do it well. And she takes a transition foul, which gives the aces a free point, which turned into a four-point play on that possession because they ended up hitting a three on that possession after they made the free throw. These are the types of errors that people like Katie Lou Samuelson and Christy Wallace and Melissa Smith consistently make. But all that said, they did not play well. Melissa Smith can't make free throws. Melissa Smith has a wide open wing jump shot, and then for some reason decides to drive it to the bas wing. When I mean wing, I mean like a 12 to 15 footer, and instead decides to dribble drive to the basket and whoo, whatever the hell that crap is. And of course, she misses. She made one shot in the third quarter, I think it was, where she does a reverse layup. And you're like, what the hell? And it actually ended up being a left-handed layup because, I mean, she just did something with her hands. And it happened to go in. And then ah, Christy Sides decides, let's start running the offense through Melissa Smith. Melissa Smith has no post skills. Why are you running any offense through Melissa Smith? <clears throat> Makes no sense. Makes no sense. They're in the game. They get back in the game, of course, even though down, they were down 41-32. They got it down to 49-48 after a Caitlin Clark and one with 4.43 to go in the third. 
Asia Wilson immediately responds with a jump shot, wide open. Why? 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 Indiana's drop covering Asia Wilson on a mid-range jumper is crazy to me. And then you end up having a, a, a Caitlin, Caitlin Clark misses a layup that she'd make nine out of ten times. And this was the one that she missed. It was a reversal, but it wasn't a difficult shot. It, it was, it was, I mean, she wasn't wide open, but it wasn't a shot that you don't expect her to make. And on all that, and then on that play, she gets elbowed square in the face. Her lip is bloody. And then because she's fallen back, she kind of swipes and hits Jackie Yelling right here. And now they're both on the ground. But Caitlin Clark caught the brunt of that and caught an elbow to the mouth. And they still don't call a flagrant foul, even though that's the rule. It, it doesn't matter if it was intentional or not. She took an elbow right to her mouth. Now, that was as close as they got the rest of the game. I don't think they got closer than that. That was it. They were down one. It was three in the second half. In the fourth, they got it down to six. But that's where the that's where it was. They they never got closer than that. That miss by Kaylin, I think, kind of took some momentum out of their sales because it would have had it back to one. And, and instead, they don't get a they they don't get a bucket on that possession. And you know, you have a situation where. It just it's gotten to the point where you I don't even know I don't even know what to say at, at, at this point because you're looking at coaching decisions in which you don't adjust to what's happening. Now the officiating, everyone will you gotta get used to the fact that the, the WNBA officiating is atrocious. It's the worst that there is. And I thought it was really, really bad last night. It was the worst I'd seen. It was the worst I'd seen because the, the officials allowed the Las Vegas Aces guards, particularly Kelsey Plum, to absolutely mug everybody. And she only finishes with one foul. She fouled Caitlin Clark all night. She fouled Kelsey Mitchell all night. It was nonstop. She never gets called. She had a situation where it was a jump ball with Kelsey Mitchell where she just grabbed Kelsey Mitchell's arm and they give her a jump ball, and then they get nose to nose, and it's like, but they allow Kelsey, Kelsey Mitchell and Kelsey Plum to get away with stuff that you don't see other players getting away with. And she's mugging players up and down the floor. She did a two arm to the back, two arm to the back, back, backside screen on Aaliyah Boston, and Aaliyah Boston gets called for a foul on Asia Wilson. And you're like, what? How does that happen? And that was when the, the score was fifty one to forty eight. So, you know, that there are things, but you have to play through that stuff. There was a flop with Chelsea Gray on a, on a, on a mid, mid-range jumper by Caitlin Clark at 72-66. Again, this was a situation where you have players that are losing their cool, losing their composure because of the officiating. And who is standing there with their, with their pockets in her, her hands in her pockets? Christy Sides. Becky Hammond at one point in that game drew a technical foul. She absolutely went ape shit. And the reason she went ape shit was because the referees gave Indiana a lot of time to review a play before they challenged it, which was probably more than you're allowed to get, and that's probably why she lost her shit. She drew a technical foul. Why doesn't Christy Sides ever draw technical fouls? I keep asking this question, and is it ever going to happen? Is it ever going to happen where she's going to absolutely lose her mind and act like she gives a shit about her players publicly. Because they need you. They need you to get that technical foul. They need you to draw the attention away from the player and onto you. They need it. And you're failing at it game after game after game. Ben Daniel mentioned on his podcast that I did see, he mentions Christy Sides gets named Coach of the year, coach of the month, which we all know was not deserved. And since that time, they have played worse every game. Even though they were two and one in that time period since then. Now they're two and two. They have gotten worse since then. <clears throat> you look at this game and Aaliyah Boston, I know, ended up in foul trouble. I watched the third quarter. 
It's a three point. It's a one point game with four forty four three to go. And there's just so many strategic things and substitution patterns that I'm looking at, and I'm sitting here saying, why is Te- Temi Fag Benley not in the game in the third quarter? Why is Temi Fag Benley only playing one minute of the third quarter? While we're watching Nalissa Smith miss free throw after free throw, commit error after error, defend lose rebounds to guards that are smaller than her, incapable of boxing out and grabbing a board. These are the most basic fundamental concepts, and she doesn't know how to do any of them. She is uh, she is awful. She's awful. It, it's hard to watch it at times. And she only finishes, she doesn't finish with a turnover, but other people get credited for turnovers because of the shit she does. Because she can't catch a pass, because she fumbles balls away. So she's not getting the turnover because she never actually had control of the ball. The person that passes her the ball gets the turnover. Now, Aaliyah Boston picks up her fifth fifth, uh, fifth foul early in the fourth quarter. And um, was it the fourth quarter? Was it third? I'm looking here real quick. I think it was the third, actually. Let me confirm this. Uh Okay, 106 in the third. That's when Aaliyah Boston gets pulled out of the game and she gets called for she got called for back to back shooting fouls at 119 and at 106 in the third. The one at 119 was complete bogus. The one at one at 106 was absolutely atrocious. And that's where um that's where Becky Hammond lost her mind. Uh Christy Sides did challenge the call. It was upheld, which was shocking because Aaliyah Boston is just standing just like this, and Chelsea Gray just flat jumps into her, and they upheld that call. It was flabbergasting to me. Now, from that point, Aaliyah Boston is sitting until there's 3.20 to go in the game. She sat from 106 to 320 to go in the game. I do not care if she does not have, if she has five fouls. I do not care. Here's what I care about. I I care about the fact that she has those five fouls because your strategic approach to this game was horrendous, Christy Sides. Why in the world is Nalissa Smith not guarding Asia Wilson early on? Why would you have Aaliyah Boston guarding her the entire game? That's a mistake. It's a, it's a strategic mistake. You don't have de- you don't have depth. You don't trust Dantes to do anything. You know she only played four minutes. You seemingly have hit and mistrust with Fag Benley. For some reason, it seems like she has this infinite trust in Melissa Smith on the floor. Well, if you have that trust, then you should have her guard Aaliyah Boston to protect, I mean, sorry, Asia Wilson to protect Aaliyah Boston from picking up some cheapies. That's a strategic thing that I would have come out with to start the game. I'm not putting Aaliyah Boston on Asia Wilson. Angela Wilson's a primarily a mid-range shooter. She doesn't, she gets layups, sure, but she loves the mid-range game. She's typically on the elbow. Why not have uh Melissa Smith guard her? <clears throat> you don't. So Aaliyah Boston has to deal with guarding Asia Wilson the entire game and uh gets in foul trouble. And then and then on top of that, so this game is now in the fourth quarter. It is 80 to 73. That's when you bring back Aaliyah Boston with 320 left. You allow the game again to get back to 10. I, I mean, when this game was at, it actually got to 12. When when this game was at, I would have said 72 66 with seven minutes to go. Aaliyah, get back in the game. Get, get an Alyssa sorry ass out of there. Get back in the game. 
Temi Fek Benley, you're guarding Asia Wilson. Like, this is what happens. Temi Fek Benley, I don't need Temi Fek Benley to score. If she scores, it's a plus. I need Temi Fek Benley to guard Asia Wilson. I need Aaliyah Boston to be able to roam and not have to be stuck on whoever was in the game, Kaya Stokes or Kia Stokes, or whatever, how you pronounce her name, Kia Stokes, who's not really much of an offensive threat who's not going to be in the paint doing much of anything. I mean, if you want to be com completely transparent, Kia Stokes took one shot the whole game. She finished with three points and six rebounds. She made a three-pointer from the corner. She's not going to shoot the ball that much. So she's a non-factor, and yet you have Aaliyah Boston guarding her. You, I mean, you have Aaliyah Boston guarding Asia Wilson. You have Melissa Smith guarding her or Temi Fag Benley guarding her. Temi Fag Benley should have been guarding Asia Wilson. These are the basic strategic things that Christy sides consistently game after game after game. Just blows. It's just so bad to watch. Now, Indiana Fever cannot have Lexi Hull committing cheapies. She has to be on that court. I mean, it's amazing that a girl, that a woman that was getting coaches' decisions DMPs early this season is a necessity to the success, success of this team because she plays deep and she plays hard all the time. Now, let's go a little bit deeper. Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark. I'm a huge fan. But Caitlin Clark has to keep her cool. She has to stop with an incessant complaining. Which is also partly Christy Sides, who doesn't take the brunt. But what she also has to do, she was 6 of 22. I get it. Shooters shoot. Shooters shoot themselves out of slumps. Something wasn't right yesterday. Every, almost every three that she took was short. She went one for ten. At some point, stop fucking shooting. And I don't mean stop sh trying to score. I mean stop shooting 30 fucking foot jump shots. Some of, uh, I'm not going to say some anymore. A large majority of those 30 to 35 foot jumpers that she's taking are terrible shots. They're unnecessary. You need to drive to the basket. You need to get fouled. You need to earn fouls and get points from the line. And even yesterday, she did miss a couple, some, lay, some layups. She did not play well. This was probably Caitlin Clark's worst game potentially of the season. And I'm not even including the top, the first 10 games or so, because it was a different team. But since this team has been playing at the level it's been playing at, even with her finishing with 16 points and six assists, she's had five turnovers, three rebounds. This was the worst game she's played in quite some time, if not the worst game of the season for her. And it's because she just kept jacking bad shots. She missed two wide open threes in the final three to four minutes of that game, three minutes of that game. They're down 80 to 73, and she misses two wide open shots. Kelsey Mitchell misses a wide open 15 footer. Like Benley misses two free throws. And they're getting stops. And they're getting stops. And they just can't put the ball in the basket. Take the ball to the rim. Draw fouls. Put the this one thing about shooting teams, they got to remember you got to put the other team on the defensive. You got to put them on their heels. If you're just flat missing, they were seven of 26 from three, they might just let you shoot when they see how bad you're shooting the ball today. And until you make one, they might not cover you the same way. So you need to put that ball on the floor, drive to the rim, and get fouled. Draw contact. You do whatever it is you have to do. Could it have just been one of those games? Sure. But 6 of 22? Nah. Even on a bad day for her from 2, 5 of 12, 
better than one of ten from three. Go to the basket. Draw contact. Get fouled. Stop complaining and stop being loose with the goddamn ball. She had five turnovers. And I don't not want to pick on turnovers with Caitlin Clark, but I remember at least one, she gets her pocket picked way too much for being as good of a point guard as she is. She should never have her pocket picked like this. And it happens because she gets loose with the ball. I'm looking, I'm, I'm just going through this stuff right now, real quick. Cause let me see here. She got loose with the ball in the third quarter and gave up a lay, it gives up a layup. It gives up a layup. You can't do that. You just can't do it. The offensive foul, shit, it happens. I'm, I'm not tripping about that. I'm never going to trip about an offensive foul. It's part of basketball. I thought the one she got called for um, in the fourth was ridiculous. It was a horrible call. But I'm looking at these this stuff where she gets her pocket picked and she just – it ends up in a layup. It happened at the end of the third quarter. <clears throat> end of the third quarter, 51 seconds. They're down nine. She gets her pocket pick. So now instead of nine, they're down 11. They end up being down seven at the end of the quarter. They probably should have been down five. She gets her pocket pick. Like, and it's not even that the player did anything special. It's that she's just loose with the ball. That There's a difference. You see the differences on, on getting your pocket picked when you're when someone looks like they just went right through you and it should have been probably called a foul. Or when, you know, or or if they made a great play, or rather if you're just being loose as shit with the ball and getting your pocket picked. Like that just can't happen. She had a bad pass early in the game to Aaliyah Boston. Wasn't even looking at the ball. Wasn't even looking at the ball. I love Caitlin Clark. I love watching Caitlin Clark play. Yesterday was not a thing of beauty for Caitlin Clark. It was as rough a game as I've seen from her in a long time. And I watch her coach stand with her hands in her pockets. They had a chance to win this game despite how poorly they played. Think about the fact that they shot 39% and lost by 11. Think about the fact that 39.7. Think about that they were shot 26.9% from three and lost by 11. Think about the fact that Caitlin Clark was one of 10 from three and they lost by 11. Think about the fact that Aaliyah Boston was three of 10 and they lost by 11. Think about the fact that the bench got absolutely destroyed. Their bench scored 30. Your bench had 11. You got crushed by the bench. They lost the game in, because of depth. And this is what might bite them in the ass in the playoffs. But we have to stop making this an experiment project and seeing what lineups work. We know what lineups work. We can see it watching TV. Christy Sides can't seem to see it. You get you get uh, Tiffany Hayes going for 12, hitting threes, and you're still not guarding her. You got Alicia Clark hitting threes. You're still not guarding her. You don't run pick and roll using Chelsea, Chelsea Gray and Lexi, using, you know, running Chelsea Gray off Lexi Hull. You think Chelsea Gray can guard a, a Caitlin Clark one-on-one? -on -one? Fuck no. She's too slow. But no, we're going to run this... I don't even know what they're running half the time. You have to adjust to who you're playing. Alicia Clark averages six points a game. She had 14. <sighs> Awful performance by this team. Horrendous coaching job. It's the same shit we've been seeing from Christy's side. She's reverting back to that shit. She get she let she let, let her coach of the month award get to her head. She thinks she's better than she is. This team's unprepared. They're unprepared, and they play Las Vegas tomorrow. They better win that game. They better be in the gym today, coming up with strategic ways to attack them 
that are not the same three plays. They literally run every single game over and over and over. I know the plays that Indiana's runs. I can watch them. I know exactly what they're running. And if I see the Caitlin Clark dump off pass to Aaliyah Boston two feet in front of half court again, I'm going to scream. I don't know why they do that. You take the ball out of her hands, and she almost never sees the ball again on those possessions. I don't. What is Aaliyah Boston going to do with a basketball at damn near half court? Put Asia Wilson in actions. Make her defend. Asia Wilson did not play well yesterday. She was 11 of 28. They did not get much from Kelsey Plum or Jackie Young. They got a little bit from Chelsea Grit on, on the offensive side. The Indiana starters outscored their starters 64 to 56. And that's inclusive of Leah Boston being terrible and Caitlin Clark shooting an, uh, shooting an atrocious percentage. You got to make players defend, put them in actions. There's no move. It's like the same shit. And Las Vegas is too good of a team, even in a bad season, and coach too well. Even like Becky Hammond is still a good coach. I mean, she came from Greg Popovich. She knows what the hell she's doing, and she knows when to push the button and where to push the button, which clear, clearly Christy Sides has absolutely no clue. And you saw a massive disparity in coaching yesterday. They better win tomorrow. Because if they can't, if they go into the playoffs not having beaten Las Vegas as the only team that they haven't beaten this year, and they have to see them in the first round potentially, I don't know if they're going to see them, but if they have to potentially, <clears throat> yeah, this is not this. It's amazing that I that in one day I went from saying this is a contender for the championship to they might not get out of they might not win a game in the first round with the way they played the last couple of games. I mean, and this includes the win. They played horrendous horrendously versus Atlanta. Let's remember Atlanta's not very good. And they were down 16 points in that game. They came back, but they didn't play well in that game. They haven't played a good they haven't played a legitimately good game. Realistically, the Dream, they won, didn't play well. The Lynx, they lost, didn't play well. The Sparks, they lost, did, they won, didn't play well. The Wings, they didn't play, they won, they didn't play well. They haven't really played well since they beat the tar out of the Chicago Sky. And against the game against the Connecticut Sun before that. Since the Chicago Sky game, they have played one, two, three, four. They played five games like, like not really well, and they won three of them. They've gotten away with it because her guard play – from Caitlin and Kelsey have been has been dominant. They've been absolutely dominant. They got to get back to that. Fag Benley has to play more. You have to know that if Asia, if if Fag Benley is not guarding Asia Wilson when she's in the game with Aaliyah Boston, there's a problem. And I will be looking for that specifically she better be guarding asia wilson when she's in the game with Aaliyah boston melissa smith better open the game guarding asia wilson on friday and she better be guarding her most of that game the only time we should see a Aaliyah boston guarding asia wilson should be in the final five to seven minutes of that game presuming she has no foul issues and maybe not even then. We should see what the score looks like before you do that. But if you put Aaliyah Boston on Asia Wilson to start the game, she'll be in foul trouble again. And you'll see her sitting for another 10-minute span because Christy Sides is just too stupid to put somebody else on Asia Wilson. But that's all I got. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Rough night for the Indiana Fever. Rough night for the whole team, basically. And, yeah, I will mention Kelsey Mitchell. Kelsey Mitchell was the only one putting the ball in the hole. How is every play not run directly to Kelsey Mitchell at that point? you got to be running every play to Kelsey. I mean, 
Kelsey Mitchell seems to be on getting that ball almost every time and taking almost every shot down the stretch when she is the only one putting the ball in the bucket. But that's all I got. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. Come on now.